Welcome back, welcome back. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make use of a stepper motor. So that's what this is here. This is the actual motor itself. And this device over here, this is the motor driver. So that chip on there, that's what actually controls the motor because it needs a bit of power. So this is just a smart, easy way to get it done. So all I'm gonna be doing in this program is just showing you how to turn this. Now, I will include another piece of code as well I found online, which is much, much, much more efficient and much more streamlined than my piece of code. However, I think the way I've done it is very easy to explain. So let's jump into that part. Here I am in my document, and the only two things I'm going to be using for this are, let me zoom in, my stepper motor and my Raspberry Pi Pico. Now, the stepper motor normally comes with a driver as well. So the stepper motor driver, so, the, so that extra chip that comes along with it. And all that is, again, is just so you can actually run the motor from a low-power device like the Raspberry Pi Pico, from the Arduino. It's just a much easier way to do things. A Raspberry Pi Pico, again, obviously a microcontroller, which I'm going to be using, uses uh, C, C++, Python. You can use the Arduino IDE as of version 2.0. You can use uh, Thonny using ras sorry, MicroPython on the Raspberry Pi Pico. Here's my block diagram. I've got no input device. This is never, ever, ever something you will do in the unit six exam. In the unit six exam, you will always have an input device. You must have an input device. My processing, of course, is gonna be done by the Raspberry Pi Pico. This is a Raspberry Pi Pico playlist after all. I might do an Arduino one later on at some point if there is enough time, um, because I know some schools might be using Arduino, some schools might be using Raspberry Pis, some schools might even use the old type uh, PIC microcontrollers. So I might do that. I think the BBC micro bit is also one that could potentially be used. And finally, we have the output device. In this case, is going to be a stepper motor. So the way the stepper motor works, let's see if I can bring up um, a PowerPoint document. The way the stepper motor works is that it simply moves a step at a time. So rather than simply spinning out of control, what it does, let me bring up a pen. So let's just say for argument's sake, we have north, we have south, we have uh, west over here, and we have east. So to actually make the thing at the top turn, so let's just assume the thing is like this, right? To make that thing turn, we first um, make this one go on. So we turn that one on, and we turn everything else off because it's using electromagnetism or magnetism, right? So once we turn one thing on, the magnet thing in the middle is going to pull towards that direction. Now, most stepper motors that you can buy on eBay, three, four pounds, are going to be four phases. So four phases, and each phase is going to be the pole that it can be directed at. So this is the North Pole or IN1 or just the first pole. It doesn't really matter, right? Then we have the second pole here. So to make this point turn to here, I'm going to activate this one and turn all the others off. So I'm going to put a zero at everything else and make sure this one is off. Then to make the third one, so South activates, I'm going to turn this one on and turn the others off again. And then to make it go from here to here, I'm going to turn this one on and turn the others off. So all I'm doing um, is using a loop. It could be a while loop, it could be a for loop. I prefer the while loop because it's a bit easier to explain. The for loop is a lot more efficient, but I prefer the while loop. All we're doing is saying turning on one and turning off all the others. Or So that's the first one, for example. The second one could be turning off this one, that one, and the others are off as well. So just simply maybe counting up or down in binary, depending on the direction you want to go. And then it's going to be 0, 0, 1, 0 and then zero, 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 one. This is the thing that we're gonna do, and we're gonna keep doing this again and again and again to move, let's say, for example, to turn right. If you wanted to turn left, we would do the complete opposite. So rather than starting one, zero, 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 then zero, one, one, we would just go the opposite way. So the very first thing we would do, is we would go zero, zero, one, zero, 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 one first. That would be number one. The number two is going to be zero, zero, one, zero. So we just count up in this case. And then we're going to have zero, one, zero, zero. And then obviously one, zero, zero, zero. So we just go the opposite direction. That's all we do for a stepper motor. Now let me go back to my document. Uh, we have gone over that. Pseudocode, stupid simple. We have start. We have repeat forever because I am choosing to use a while loop. The code I found online is very good, a very efficient piece of code, but again, I'm choosing to use a while loop. So I just say simply repeat forever because I'm going to use an infinite while loop. And I say turn to position one, which is going to, again, let me go back to my thing, is going to be that north one. Oh, one second. Let me get my pen out again. It's going to, so we again, we have north, south, uh, west, or east and west, whichever way you say it. 
And I say, go to position one. That's going to be that one there. Position two, position three, and position four. I go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But again, remember the Raspberry Pi can, um, the processor can run at 133 megahertz per second. That's 133 million times per second. So if this is a decent stepper motor and we have a decent driver and we have decent components, we could make this move as fast as we want in theory. Now in practice, these small devices, they will probably get too hot, they'll probably burn out, start smoking, but in theory, I could make it move as fast as I want within reason, right? So um, I go to position one, actually I should put wait for, I think there's a 0.001 pause, so maybe I should put that in. So I could say pause or sleep, uh, so I could say sleep for 0.001 seconds. And remember, this should be nothing for the Raspberry Pi because what I'm saying is that this is one thousandth of a second, right? Keep in mind, the Raspberry Pi can go up to 133 million times per second. So this is nothing for the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to copy and paste this as many times as I need. So copy there, paste it there. I'm going to go, oh, one sec. I'm going to go here as well after number three and do the same thing, and after number four, and do the same thing again. And this loop will simply keep repeating forever because, again, it's a while loop. That's why I've got end here, because I'll just say keep repeating forever until I press stop. After that, I have my flow chart, more or less the same thing, just, again, a pictorial description. I'm going to do start, turn to first uh, magnet, turn, the turn on first magnet only, sorry. Sleep for X amount of seconds. Well, I put 0 0.5 here, but it could be whatever value you want. Turn on second magnet, and th again, this is an output because you're going to actually see the magnet move. Sleep, I'm putting as a process. So I could actually put process here as well. Rather than just pause, I could put process because it's something that we don't see, but it's something that we know is being done or calculated in the background. Hence, I like to say process. Then I say go to, uh, sorry, turn on third magnet, sleep for half a second, turn on fourth magnet, and sleep for half a second. They then go back to turning on the first magnet again. So this is where the loop comes in because it's going to go along here, go along here, go along here, and eventually go back to number one. So uh, turn on magnet one, sleep. Turn on magnet two, sleep. Turn on magnet three, sleep. Turn on magnet four, sleep. Go back to magnet one again and keep doing that until I press stop. Now here's my circuit diagram. Let me open my fritzing. Uh, let me zoom in as much as I can. Now the main things you need to focus on here are the on and off. So here we can see it says five to 12 volts. You can't see the one there, but there is a one there. That's 5 to 12 volts. That means that this can be powered from a 5-volt supply or from, an, um, well, be between 5 and 12 volts, anything between that. So those Raspberry Pi Pico can give you 5 volts. Uh, we can do, the Arduino gives about 6 or 7. I actually don't remember. And then we have stuff like a 9-volt battery, which we could use as well. It really doesn't matter, right? This is how we would power it. I put uh, this pin here all the way up to the 5-volt line. I put the ground pin, so the zero one, all the way into the ground volt line. And then for the others, IN1, 2, 3, and 4, I simply plug them into um, the Raspberry Pi into any GPIO that I want to use. And I've chosen to use 14, 15, 16, 17, simply because it was easy for me on the physical board to plug them in here because I didn't have much stuff on this side. So let me go back to my document. And if I look at my pin connections, let me describe the pin connections now. I say pin three from the Raspberry Pi Pico goes to the ground of the motor. So the, in some cases, it might just be a minus sign. Pin 40 from the Raspberry Pi Pico goes to the VCC. Again, five volts, f well, five to 12. So whichever one you decided to use. Pin 14 from the Pico goes to IN1 of the driver board. So again, let me go back to my circuit. And the driver board is this thing here. Remember this one here. So this is IN1, two, three, and four. The cables are blocking the labels, but that's what's there. I'm going to put all of this stuff on my GitHub and on the website as well. I created a GitHub account yesterday. I'll be putting all the resources I use here, I, um, either on the web, well, in both places, on the website and on my GitHub, so you guys can download them and use them completely free. I did not create any of these components. I found them on other websites, and some of them I found in the actual Fritzing library as well. So whatever you download, it's not from me directly. All right, now pin 15 goes to IN2. Pin 16 goes to IN3 and pin 17 to IN4. That's it. So I simply connect it in that way and I tell it, go to IN1, then 2, then 3, and then 4. Now the code here, let me go into my Thunny, which I have opened somewhere here. Oh, actually don't have it there. 
Okay, let me just zoom in on the Word document here. So this part up here, I've simply said motor IN1 is pin 14, 15, 16, and 17, just like I said in my description before. This sequence thing here I found on a website. A very, very good piece of code. So if I just look at this code here, I'll try and find the website as well and paste it in the description. They, they use an infinite loop as well. And they say for step in full sequence, uh, print the step value, I've decided to add that myself. And for item in range, length of all pins. So I've said all pins should be motor one, well, motor I and one, two, three, and four. So I've got four there. So this should give the value of four. So for item in range four, essentially, print item value, I wanted to see the item value. All pins, item. So this in bracket tells it to go to that specific location. This thing called all pins is a list or an array in other languages, but Python, we call it a list. Go to that location. Um, here, and this is going to keep incrementing because I'm saying for item in range, and is, it, what it's going to do is go item zero or item one in some cases, but let's do Python way, item zero, then go around the loop again, item one, then go around the loop again, then item two, then go around the loop again, then item three. That's what it's going to do. This is what I found online. What I decided to do was the stupid, simple way, but I think it's a bit easier to explain. Infinite loop, which is my while true there. And I say, turn motor I and I one high. Simple. Turn everything else. Oh, there's a space here that shouldn't be there. Turn motor I and I two low, three low, four low. Sleep for however many seconds I want, right? That's what I've said. And I've gone back and I've said, well, after I've slept, turn motor I and I one low, motor two high, motor three low, motor four low. So again, just like I described in my diagram here, I turn number one on first, then number two, then number three, then number four. But remember, if number one is on, so let's just say number one is on, everything else has to be off. That's why that works like that. If number two is on, everything else has to be off as well. If number three is on, everything else has to be off. I'm going to do the full sequence just because it probably makes sense to most people. And let me do number four over here. If number four is on, everything else is going to be a zero. So that way, the magnet is going to pull that tiny thing towards it each time. That's all that this is doing here. And I do this, I repeat this like three or four times, not the most efficient way to do things. This way up here, honestly, is very, very neat and very, very good. But I think this way, my way is a lot more easy to explain. So here I am now on my breadboard again. As you can see, we have one LED on there. What's going to happen is when I run this code, it should cycle through these LEDs telling me which actual thing is being turned on. But as it stands, this might be moving very, very quick because, again, the Raspberry Pi can do up to 133 million times per second, so it might not be visible to us humans. Don't worry too much about that. This is why I put that foam pad on top of the stepper motor here, so we should see that turning easier than we can see the LEDs going on and off. So now all I need to do is press play on my screen here. Let's see what happens. Before I actually press play, there's one thing I, I silly, silly person me I did. Now the code I found online is this while loop here. Very, very efficient code as I've said. All of this I found online to be fair. But I went in and I just did my own thing because I'm like, you know what? I don't think students who are just learning programming are really going to understand how this works. Whereas my method, which is the one I explained before, I think people understand this a lot more. So what I'm going to do, we have two while loops currently working or two while loops at the same time. It will never get to my while loop here because this one came first. This infinite loop came before my infinite loop. Because I have a while loop here at the top, it will never get to this one because I already have an infinite while loop and I have set no condition for me to get out of this while loop. This will always be running no matter what. So because of that, it will never get to the second one. So what I need to do, I need to comment this one out, highlight everything, and in Thunny, to comment everything out, you can right click or go to comment out, but I prefer to just highlight everything Press Alt on my keyboard, A-L-T, that's next to the Windows flag, and I'm going to press the no hold down Alt, and I'm going to press the number three. That comments everything out. Now, to uncomment is Alt and four, so it does the opposite. Comment everything out, and now this code here should run. I'm going to press play. To, again, keep an eye on this tiny thing here. I'm going to press play, see what happens. Yep. We can see that light flashing there. 
but we don't see the others turning on because we're moving too fast. But we can clearly see this thing here rotating. Very, very accurate stepper motors and very cheap. You can buy a stepper motor for like three, four pounds and it comes with the driver board as well. Now, how does this work? Again, let's go back to my diagram. I've explained this part already. Let me do a new one. Uh, how do I do a new thing here? Uh, let's keep all of that. Let's do a new one. Let's go to that one as well. And the way this works, stepper motors, they move a, sp oh, a specific degree each time. So let's just say we know that a full circle turn is going to be 360 degrees. Sorry about the bad handwriting. I'm using my mouse to write. 360 degrees each turn, right? Let's just say for argument's sake, each one of these turns is going to be 3.6 degrees. So 3.6 degrees turn. That's pretty accurate which means that for me to get to my 360, I'm going to have to turn 100 times, roughly. Now, this is not what this one is doing, but I'm just giving a hypothetical. So if I tell my thing to move 3.6 degrees each time, I can kind of specify where I need it to go. I can say, actually, you know what, let's go to 180. And for me to get to 180 from 3.6, I know I'm going to need roughly, sorry, 50 turns, roughly. If I need to get to 90, Okay, I know, I know I'm going to need roughly 25. That's typically how it works. So these things, very, very accurate. And we can get stepper motors with um, less turning points each time. 3.6 is just a number I came up with because it was easy to divide by 100. But you can get some that have more and some that have less. So a more accurate one would have a less, less of a turning point each time. In any case, thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share. And I have a few more Raspberry Pi videos coming before I go back to my Unit 6 playlist and finish off the 2022 exam paper. Thanks for watching.